my name is Sylvia Leung. I am a registered nurse with the University Hospital. And here I work with the rheumatology clinic and I do their methotrexate self-injection teaching. So today I'm going to be teaching you online. So we are going to start with um, gathering our supplies when we do methotrexate. We're going to take our syringe, we're going to take our sub-Q needle, we're going to gather our alcohol swab, and today we're going to be using a bottle of normal saline or a vial of normal saline, but at home you would be using a vial of your methotrexate. And we will also have our sharps container to dispose of our needle and syringe and our vial of methotrexate when we are done with it and also a log and a pen. So to start with, our first step would be to prepare the syringe. We'll take our syringe and we're going to open it up by peeling it back with a banana. But we're going to leave the syringe in there to protect the tip so we can keep it sterile and not contaminate it. Then I'm going to set it down and now I'm going to take my needle, much like the syringe, I will peel that back and once again I'll carefully open it up without contaminating where the needle joins on to the syringe. And we're going to take our needle and attach it together. So this one is considered a lure lock attachment and I'm going to actually screw that on together. Depending on where you get your supplies from and what pharmacy you get your supplies from, your needle and your syringe may look slightly different, but generally this is what you'll see. Some will be a screw on top, some will be a slip on top. And this here today for demonstration, I am going to be using a 3cc or a 3 mil syringe. So that is your prepared needle. Step two will be preparing your vial. Here I've got a new vial of normal saline. At home you would have a new vial of methotrexate. How I know it's new is it's got a protective colored cap. When we see that there's a protective colored cap, what we're going to do is the first step is write the date on it. The reason being is the methotrexate that you have is good for multiple uses and can be used once it's open for up to stored up to four weeks. And to store the methotrexate, it should be stored at room temperature in a cool, dry place and protected from light as well. We're going to put our dates, and you can write on a piece of tape if you want, but I'm going to write directly on the bottle today, today's date. That way I know what day I opened it, and that I must use this, or must not use it beyond the four weeks once it's been opened. So I'll set that down, put my pen aside, and now I may flip off the top. So I will now grab the alcohol swab and I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to clean the top of the vial. We have a rubber stopper there. I'm going to start by cleaning from the inside in a circular motion. I'm going to clean outwards, forcing whatever bacteria might be on there outwards and keeping the center where I'm going to inject into clean. So now our bottle is prepared. I'm going to now take a uh, my needle that I prepared earlier and I'm going to remove the cap from the bottom up, pushing it upwards, and without contaminating the needle, remove the cap. And before we actually take the methotrexate out of the vial, we need to, and this is an important step, we need to inject the amount of air, same amount of air that we're going to inject into the vial that we're going to be taking out of the vial. Because it works as a vacuum system, if you do not inject air first, you may find yourself battling and tr um, having trouble getting the methotrexate out of the bottle. So today, for example, we will be using, um, pretending that we have a dose of 25 milligrams of methotrexate that needs to be injected in. 
we're, for that dose it's going to be one mil and you'll know that by reading your pharmacy label on your methotrexate vial it will tell you how much to pull or it, withdrawal and as we withdraw we'll pull back on the plunger on the bottom to the one mil line and that's it to where your solid line lines up with the one mil indicator now that we have the air in the syringe and your vial is clean and prepared we're going to insert our needle in a 90 degree angle in the center of the rubber stopper and we're going to inject the air into the vial. Now that we have the air in the vial, we're going to invert our vial and needle and syringe and we're going to draw back our methotrexate dose. We're going to draw back to the 1 mil. I've just passed the 1 mil a little bit, but that's okay because I notice that I've got an air bubble here and I can force it out. If you happen to be drawing back and you've noticed that you have air bubbles on the lower like there is here, you could start over by injecting all the solution back into the vial and pulling back again. If, however, you still have some bubbles there, the next thing you can do is by stabilizing your vial and your needle, you could tap the air bubbles out. And then just put your plunger to the right dose. Little tiny, tiny air bubbles that are in there right now, those are okay. I wouldn't worry too much about that because that won't affect your dosing. Now that your needle uh, is prepared with the methotrexate, we're going to put the vial back down onto the table and remove your needle out of it. This way, if your vial is downwards, we're going to prevent the methotrexate from squirting out of the vial. You now have the methotrexate in your needle, and we're going to cap the needle loosely back so that we can take the needle out and inject ourselves after we've prepared our site. So now we're going to choose and prepare our injection site. So what we're going to do is talk about landmarking. For methotrexate self-injection, the best sites are your abdomen and your thighs. So to landmark your abdomen, you are going to use your navel as the center of your landmarking and draw imaginary line vertically and imaginary line horizontally. That has divided your abdomen into four quadrants. We have our right upper, left upper, right lower, left lower. The one inch area around your navel will be a no injection so zone because there are lots of blood vessels that you need to avoid. The other sites will be your thigh. If you place your heel of your palm on your hip and the other heel of your hand to your knee, you can inject anywhere in between the space of your hands from the middle to the outer aspect of your thigh. So today we're going to be demonstrating on how to inject into your right upper quadrant. Okay, now we're going to be preparing our site. We're going to take our alcohol swab and much like preparing your vial, we're going to start from the inside and clean in circular motion outwards. We're going to take our needle, we're going to remove the cap, and we're going to take the section that we've just cleaned, pinch the area up so that we can raise the subcutaneous tissue, which is the fatty tissue in between your skin and your muscle. We're going to, in a darting motion, hold the needle 
and quickly dart it into the abdomen at a 90 degree angle. We're going to take our index finger and we're going to inject our methotrexate into the abdomen at a rate of 3 to 5 seconds. We're going to hold the needle after the plunger is all the way down for 1 to 2 seconds to allow for some absorption and as we let go of our skin, we'll pull the needle out. Then we're going to take our needle and dispose of it into a sharps container. When your sharps container is three quarters full, that means it's time to ensure that it's all locked up and take it in to your nearest pharmacy for proper disposal. So now that we've completed our self-injection, we're going to finish up with our last step, and that's recording our injection. You should gather some kind of a log that you have. Here we have one that shows our date, our time, and our injection site. This way you can keep track of when you last did your injection, and also here I'm going to zone in on our site. It's important to know what site you did because it's important to rotate our sites. Rotating our sites avoids scar tissue buildup and in the end it will allow for better absorption and better effects of your methotrexates. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact your rheumatologist or visit our website at edmontonrheumatology.com.